Hey, Cole Gray. Today, I have a special guest, and it's not Mr. Cole Gray. So for the first time, let me introduce to you my favorite, most gorgeous mop top friend, Terry. Hi. Terry <laughs> is here because my husband and I had dinner at her house last week, and she served for dessert a banana pudding. If you're in the South, you might call it nanner pudding. Nanner pudding. I don't call it that, unless I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but it was no joke life-changing best banana pudding ever oh. so of course truly so and I believe it's an old family recipe it is an old family recipe it's amazing so I decided to invite her over to be a special guest today and share it with all of you because it was just too good not to share so tell us a little bit about the recipe uh, actually it was my mother's recipe and I'm not sure whose it was before then probably my Cajun grandma's recipe nice uh, but it's definitely old and there are lots of little tricks here in fact you're gonna see sort of a pinch here and a pinch there in this recipe so Terry's already shared with me that there are some secrets to this recipe that she has uh, modified it with over the years that she won't even share with me so even though that was the best banana pudding I've ever had in my life this may turn out to be the second best but she promises me it's still gonna be amazing and life-changing and it will be when you make it in your kitchen too so Let's turn the lights on in this place and get cooking. All right. These are the ingredients we're gonna use for our banana pudding and Terry is gonna take us through them. So a banana pudding starts of course with bananas. bananas. Absolutely. Or as the minions say, bananas. <laughs> bananas. Now listen, we are two girlfriends who are gonna try very hard to do <laughs> zero, see you already blew oh, it. Sorry. Zero giggling <laughs> in this discussion about bananas and how um, ripe or firm, firm they need to be yes. and all of that so you know mothers this might be a good time to ask your children to leave the room <laughs> so let's talk about bananas okay so there's just a little bit of green here you can see and then the rest of it is yellow and I would reach over and give it a squeeze but then just I think we should skip that part <laughs> let's skip that part We're giggling. No. you're giggling let's okay. all be mature here people okay, sorry 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 reset okay okay all right ready what's next okay so the next thing on the list is we're gonna do three cups of milk and you can use 2% or whole. Do not use skim. Here I've used whole milk and we're mm. actually going to add some cream. A little bit of heavy cream. This is one of your secrets. This is one of the secrets is the recipe actually calls for three and a half cups of milk. But with the pinch of this and pinch of that mentality, you kind of have to add like that last half cup has to be something creamy. So yeah. it should be heavy cream or half and half. Listen, yeah. this is dessert. It is dessert. So we're not worried about low fat. No. And we're not worried about calories. We're going to go for delicious. Okay. So then we also are going to do a third cup of flour and four egg yolks. We're going to do three quarters of a cup of sugar. You can use white sugar. Personally, for my banana pudding, I like turbinado, mm. uh, the Hawaiian stuff. Well, I might swap this out for the turbinado yes. since I had the best ever. You know what? See this right here, guys? Mm -hmm. That's going to disappear and become turbinado sugar turbinado. in a minute. It's got that wonderful maple-y, mm. not maple-y, but like molasses What about flavor. brown sugar? Um, I wouldn't do that. Although I think it's, you know, it's a richer sugar. I think it would be too overwhelming for the dish. And I'm going to tell you about the sweetness of the dish later because it's very we important. Go. Okay. Uh, we're going to do a quarter teaspoon of salt. I don't and know And that's over here. there in my beautiful it uh, is. <laughs> vintage jadeite salt cellar. We'll get to that. You're going to need a box of vanilla wafers. I recommend either these Keebler guys right here. The L's will be very happy. Or you can get the Nilla Wafer brand, and that's the brand that I use. You know, I the store use. was completely sold out of the uh, Nilla brand. I've never bought Keebler before, and I considered it a compromise, but we'll see what happens. You're saying Keebler's okay? Keebler is okay, yeah. All right, you're also going to need a lemon. We're going to use just a little bit of lemon juice in the recipe to keep the bananas from getting all brown and gross. And then that's two tablespoons of butter. We'll talk about that brand later, mm. but I highly recommend Kerrygold. Okay. And two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Now make sure this is real, pure vanilla extract. Vanilla extract that actually saw a vanilla bean at one point yes. in its life. Yes. If it says imitation on the box, don't walk, run away. Exactly. Okay. You do not put that mess in your banana pudding. Ain't no mess in this kitchen. All right. Okay. We make a nanner pudding now. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is separate our eggs. Right. And I'm sure you have a super secret fancy method for that that you're going to share with us. I have a very 
non bed and breakfast total garage and snack method for nice. this. <laughs> nice. We're doing the Tennessee uh, version of separating eggs. My mother had one of those. 40 year old Tupperware egg separators. Yeah. I am considerably less fancy. So I just crack and then open carefully and start letting the white strip out and sort of pass it back and forth. And there you go. Let me try one. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I forgot to get a garbage bowl. That's okay. You can put it right back okay, in there. Yeah. Yeah, and if my audience thinks I'm trying this for the first time and I've never separated eggs this way before, that's just fine because it makes me look like some kind of superhero yes well they were giggling and immature like two minutes ago so let's not worry about that. they were doing that too it yes. wasn't just us it wasn't just us cool here i'll come and do the other one if i ever like my husband likes to watch me do this and if i ever wind up getting a little bit of yolk in the white he goes oh man <laughs> he just he's just your uh, peanut gallery <laughs> he is my peanut gallery <laughs> he also loves to be the taste tester for the banana puddings i can't imagine why oh, right it's good with black coffee, by the way. Yum. Like, even if you're not a black coffee drinker much. All right, there are our eggs. Now, while you're getting ready to do the custard, I'm going to go swap out that sugar, and we'll do the next step. Awesome. All right, it's custard time. Woohoo! What do we do? All right, first thing I'm going to do is turn this burner on to medium, so it's on about six, and you'll adjust that just depending on how your stove does. Go ahead and pour in the milk. We've added the half cup of cream to this, heavy whipping cream. Yeah, cut the milk with a little bit of something creamy, like you can use um, maybe a quarter cup of Eagle Brand sweetened condensed milk. Mm. My mom swears by the canned pet milk that she actually puts in there evaporated that mm -hmm. makes it really nice and creamy. I'm going to go ahead and add these separated eggs. That's one of the secrets of the recipe, is the cutting the milk with something creamy. And our flour. It's so nice to have another girl in the kitchen. <laughs> and we have changed it out for our turbinado sugar. We'll put this in here. And you should too. And you should too. Yes, it's got a nice molasses-y taste. Here, let me take that. Thank we'll... you. Oh. The secret to a good banana pudding is it's not too sweet. It's not like overwhelmingly, cloyingly, people take three bites and they're like, hey, we're done. Is that why you choose the <laughs> turbinado sugar as well? It's, just, it's a little yes. bit less sweet. It's To me, it's a little bit less sweet. It, it has a, um, a richer flavor. It has I a think. richer flavor, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, Now you said this is for a good banana pudding. What if you're making a bad banana pudding? <laughs> <laughs> I think it will be very refreshing on a hot summer day. Yeah. Um, but it will not taste quite like this okay the other reason you want to make your custard from scratch is because you want to when we go to layer it you want to pour warm custard over your wafers and your bananas because it will help caramelize the bananas a little bit and bring out their natural sweetness oh. and it will soak down into the vanilla wafers and we're gonna let it like sit out on the counter for probably two or three hours just at room temperature and it gets this wonderful cakey-like texture and the flavor of the bananas will. The wafers do. Just, yes, absolutely. Uh -huh. So right now I'm whisking out some, there's a few flour clumps. So if you're using a, an instant pudding, it's never warm at any point. It's not. As those of you instant pudding fans know, uh, and the warmth is key as well as the uh, reduced level of sweetness. That explains why when I tasted this at your dinner table, my world just rocked. <laughs> So actually, it takes patience. You're gonna stand here stirring this custard as it cooks, and you're stirring it the whole time because, as you know, if you, or you may not know, if you cook dairy on the stove for a long time without whisking and stirring it, it will separate and become like cottage cheese. That is a bad thing. It's Do you know disgusting. that I didn't know that? It's disgusting. I'm not a pudding from scratch maker, so I learned something, and I hope y'all, y'all did too. So how long do we need to stand here and do this? About 30 minutes. It okay. will start to get thick and some steam will come off of it and it'll be, it, your kitchen will smell like the songs of angels, like, oh. like the songs of angels. Well, we're not going to make our audience stand here and watch you <laughs> no. uh, whisk pudding for 35 <laughs> minutes, but we're going to recommend that, first of all, if you're going to do this at home, uh, turn on Pandora. Absolutely. And get your favorite playlist going. Or your podcast. Yeah, or your favorite podcast. And, or you know pray or sing to yourself absolutely or whatever you want to do to um, make this a pleasant experience you know you're gonna be here 
for half an hour. Yes. Make it fun. Absolutely worth it too. Okay, so we're gonna find our own private way to make this fun off camera. <laughs> I'm sure there will be giggling, and then we're gonna come back when we're at the, uh, the tail end of this. So we've been stirring for a few minutes and we're gonna add another ingredient, yes? Yes. This is to keep your bananas from browning whenever you go to layer them in the pan. I'm just gonna add a little bit of lemon juice. So I'm gonna squeeze this cut side up so any seeds wind up just kind of in my hand versus down in my custard. Another yes. fabulous kitchen tip. So the juice of about half a lemon, as much yes. as you can get out of there? Yes. It doesn't really take that much. You're just trying to keep the bananas from browning. You don't really want the, the flavor of banana juice. And even though- or not banana juice, but lemon juice. Even though possibly you could take some of that stuff that's called lemon juice that comes in a green bottle no. and put it in here, we're gonna highly recommend no. you not ever do that for any reason. Never. I mean, come on, get a lemon, cut it in half, and put it in your custard. Make right? your mama proud. Cut Seriously. a lemon in half. All right. All right, Miss Terry. Okay, so this is steaming. It is not boiling, but it probably would if I were to stop stirring it. And it is like this consistency where it's, I don't know, I wanna like show. Yeah, you can lift it up. It's kinda here. like this. Um, it's very pudding-ish. It's very pudding-ish. It's gonna be kinda like pie filling. So that's what it's gonna look like whenever you take it off the heat. It's uh, sticking smoothly to the side it's, of the pan a yes. little bit. And for those of you who uh, make macaroni and cheese, if you make a cheese sauce or a white sauce or any kind of a thickened sauce, it's that same consistency very that similar. you're looking at and looking for. Very, very similar to that. Okay, okay. so I'm gonna turn this heat off. And there's two more ingredients that we're gonna add to this custard that make it just really amazingly. So we're taking uh, it off the heat, amazingly. and I'm gonna bring you around to the other side. Okay. Oh, that smells so good. We're on the other side <laughs> of the kitchen now. All right, so we've taken it off the heat, and now what happens? The last thing that we're gonna do is we're going to add two tablespoons of this butter, and I prefer Kerrygold, so we'll just drop that Why right do you in. prefer Kerrygold? Let's talk about that. Oh. Have you tasted Kerrygold? <laughs> I'm a, uh, well, is, I know I tasted your banana yes. pudding. It was amazing. It is this wonderful butter from Irish grass-fed cows. They are clearly very happy because it's just incredible tasting butter. The cows are happy? Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. butter from happy cows. <laughs> They're overjoyed. Okay, they found Jesus. Okay, so we've got, <laughs> we're, last but not least, we're going to add two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. I know fake stuff here. We talked about that earlier. Yes, very important. We're gonna admonish you one more time. One more time, do not put pure. fake vanilla. It vanilla. needs to say pure. And say it right, Terry. I oh, said, and actually that actually thickened the sauce a little bit more. It thickens the sauce, so I'm just going to whisk in that butter. So the custard's ready? The custard is ready. This is for me? You should taste it. I can't taste it? Yes, you can taste it. We, you have to taste test the custard at this point. Not because you're trying to see if it's good, but. Just because it already is good. Because it's custard. <laughs> of course you have to taste it's it. It's delicious. <laughs> There's really oh no gosh. other reason. There is nothing like a from scratch pudding. It's crazy delicious. Mm. Oh, and I, you know what? I taste the turbinado sugar. Mm -hmm. That's okay. wonderful. So now that the custard is done, it's off the heat, but it's still nice and warm. Uh, I am going to show you what I've done to prepare the assembly portion of things. And then we're going to Layer it up. continue layering it up. So Terry instructed me on how to prepare the bowl for the assembly portion, and I've just taken the Nilla wafers and made a nice layer. We've come most of the way up. Is this as far up as you normally go, or do you go all the way up the side? That looks great. Okay, and so now we're gonna start our layering. You can make a vanilla pudding um, serve more people by adding more of these ingredients that we layer. So you could use up to a whole box of these Nilla wafers that you can't see on camera right here, and you know quite a few bananas. So what I'm gonna do is just start peeling these and cutting the bananas up onto it. I'll take the peels. Okay. So I just take this and just start cutting the bananas up like that. It's super clean method that I use, as you can tell. <laughs> Listen, there's a certain amount of funk that's permitted. There into really the is. It doesn't hurt a thing. You know, there's a popular expression. It's not that popular actually, but I'm gonna share it with you now. <laughs> And that is, dirt don't hurt. Yeah. 
<laughs> fine. Don't just don't get your hair in this. Like I mean, we, we did wash our hands. Yes, Let's be we real. did. We're not teaching you how to make filthy pudding. It's banana pudding. All right, so I'm gonna spread these out a little bit. You know, I've said many times in my videos, if you're not getting your hands in the food, you're just doing it wrong. Well, and the food doesn't transfer, like, get, you know, get the transfer of the love that you're using to prepare it. I mean, if you want to use tweezers or, you know, tongs to get your bananas positioned correctly, be my guest. But you're going to be missing, really, the, the fun portion of our program. Okay, that's one whole banana right there. Okay. You can use a nice deep spoon or you can use a ladle to just kind of put your custard over here and just, I sort of cover everything with it. Oh, it smells so good, too. That's an amazing little swirl technique you mm -hmm. have there. Thank you. See, if it were me, I would just pour it right over there. Just pour it right over there. And I'm trying to just kind of cover everything a little bit so that warmth from the custard brings out the sugar in the bananas. Mmm. Yeah. And I'm getting a fair amount on your counter. Yay. Which is the, which is the cool, great tradition of cooking. And we're going to do another layer of wafers here. I can help with that. Okay. And you don't have to go up the sides with the second layer. You could just kind of throw them down there. They don't have to be perfect. It's a banana pudding throw down. It's, it's a sloppy, <laughs> delicious dessert. Get all that warm custard soaking down into those. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Soaking down into those wafers. Let's go ahead and cut up another banana. And it makes this wonderful cakey like texture. I can texture. tell you've handled bananas many times in the past. Do you want us to have to stop this video again? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I think I'm going to have to somehow put the word giggle into the you have to. title of this. Yes. And it's definitely going to be a tag, Girls Giggling, to help people find this video. It's the reason to watch it. If you don't like bananas, watch it for the giggles. Yeah, folks. what's wrong with you if you don't like bananas? Oh, yeah, well, there is that. Seriously. Seriously. Okay, time for some more custard here. And why don't I pull this over here to When is it not time for more custard? <laughs> right? This is the goofiest cooking video ever made. That's what makes it fun. Will you be in all my videos, Terry? Sure. Really? You mean it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I like guys. watching you, and I don't want to hear my own voice. Yeah, so. Next time, it's, you're just going to have me. I don't have anybody to banter with when I do my own videos. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to leave enough to just cover the top, which is about that much here. So we're going to do our last layer of cookies. You can double this recipe, by the way, and if you're going to have more than six people at your table, I highly recommend it. Also, this is fantastic at potlucks. Um, it tastes way better than birthday cake. <laughs> Truly. And save a couple of vanilla wafers for the, for the top. How many people are you trying to say this uh, recipe will serve? About six. Or, or one. Or one. <laughs> Just get like a whole kettle of black coffee to have with it. Are we reserving enough? There's We're, some broken ones in here. There's a few. Well, I'll, I'll leave a couple in here. Okay. Let's do... I'm going to put one more banana. So your banana pudding, a lot of people like to stick theirs directly into the fridge. Don't do that. This is one of the tricks. You can leave it sitting out covered on the counter for, I would say, at least two hours to get all of that custard soaked into the cookies and it's going to bring out that banana flavor. If you'll notice we didn't have any sort of banana flavoring in the custard itself, but it will take on a banana flavor whenever you Yes, I was amazed when I discovered yeah. that there was nothing but bananas contributing to the banana flavor because this will slap you in the face with its banana That's flavor. So wonderfully no delicious. No kidding. Yes, yeah, so good. It's very refreshing dessert. It's not heavy. Um, so just don't over-sweeten it. It's, that's the best thing about it. It makes it so compulsively edible is that there's not too much sugar. And resist the urge to just pop this into the fridge. Just let it sit yes. on your counter. You will be glad you did. Let the flavors marry. Now, when you're ready to eat it, do you eat it chilled or do you eat it warm? You can eat it room temperature. My mother says that is the best way to eat it. Some people like to have it cold. So after it's sat out for about two, three hours, you can pop it in the fridge for maybe an hour. And the next day, if there's any leftover, <laughs> it's going to be even better. You like, did, you so did send good. me home with some leftovers. Yes. And I did eat that chilled, and it was also very good. Um, but don't chill it until after you've let it sit like this, because that's going to... For me, one of the things I love the most about it that I have not loved with other banana puddings was the... Uh, texture and consistency yes. of vanilla wafers. They either stay crispy uh, and interrupt the whole pudding yes. experience, or they get soggy and mealy, thereby 
wrecking it. Oh, it's just awful. Yeah. yeah. But this was a perfectly velvety, smooth, cake-like integration. Uh, just, just sheer perfection. So to top it, one of the, the ideas that you had was to slice a banana long ways and go after it with like put a little turbinado sugar and go after it with a brulee torch which is insanely good yeah uh i don't have one of those so i mean a lot of people who were watching this video probably don't have one of those <laughs> so you just drop a few little wafers on the top like in you know a, a pattern just to make this little pattern and when you pull this out at the it's a happy little flower church it's a, it's a very bob ross uh, kind of yeah yeah it's going to be several hours we're going to go have lunch yeah and then we'll come back and uh we'll have dessert with you yep all right <laughs> are we ready to taste we are ready to taste i'm going to get some banana and i'm going to get some pudding some cookie and a little cookie mm-hmm Jam packed with banana flavor. The cookie's not bothering me, and the cookie typically bothers me in a banana pudding. How does it compare to your mother's recipe? It does it justice. It's really good. What did we change uh, from Mama's Day? The turbinado sugar. Um, we changed the white sugar to turbinado. Um, by the way, this can be served with whipped cream on on top. It's really really good. And if you do that. After all we've been through together, guys, don't use a ready whip. Mm -mm. Make your own whipped cream. It's so simple. If I need to make a video to show you how to make homemade whipped cream, I will. You should Let me do know. That. Let me know in the comments. But, you know, make it yourself. Um, if you liked this video, would you tell me so by doing this? You know, there's a little place where you can do this. Uh, while you're at it, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Check out a few more videos. We do cooking videos and we do art videos around here. Maybe you'll come help me with an art video one Ooh. day. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought of this <laughs> crazy video and whether you want more goofiness in the future cooking videos or whether you think we need to get it together and straighten up and do, you know, some more serious cooking. Something serious. If you do, probably you should unsubscribe now. Anyway, uh, we're going to finish this and we will see you next time. Listen, there's an outtake video and there was so much to take out. <laughs> so much to take out. Most of it, me. Definitely check out the link in the description box. Don't miss it. You want to see the outtakes from this video. You're going to laugh. Yeah, you're going to laugh. Okay, bye. bye.